This story was told to me a few years ago by my family. It is about an old amusement park that closed down before I was born. Not too far from where I live, a carnival is still lying in ruin. Teacups, a Ferris wheel, and an assortment of midway games, that sort of thing. But above all, people who had been there before remember the carousel. There had never been one like it before. All of the horses were pitch black with red marble eyes, and the platform was crimson red. The inner box was painted with faint outlines around the base that almost looked like fog. But most of all was the music. Unlike the classic organ music that plays on most carousels, this music was much deeper and sinister. It had a charming old sense of romanticism to it, and I am told that this carousel was the carnival's biggest attraction. People would come from all over the country to see the Reaper's Carousel, as it was commonly called. At least, that's what my grandfather used to call it. My grandfather was the proud operator of the carousel. Day in and day out, he would run the carousel, change the music reels, and direct the guests onto the horses. After working there for seven years, he had named every one of the horses and knew them each by heart. He had memorized every song that the carousel played and even created words to sing along with them, haunting ballads that would spook the guests. <laughs> but truthfully, everyone loved it. They would call my grandfather the Keeper of the Reaper, and actually, it was his pleasure. He loved the Reaper's Carousel and never grew tired of it. The carousel also had a very special feature to it that would drive guests to ride it again and again. The brass ring game. As the carousel would spin around and around, each horse would pass by a little hook which held a brass ring. And if the rider could catch the ring off the hook, he or she would win a prize. It was a challenge, but occasionally a lucky rider would catch it. In fact, there was more thrill in being the one to catch the brass ring than there was in actually winning a prize. The fun was in the sport of it, so it came as no surprise one day when a little girl, about nine years old as I am told, wanted to try for the brass ring when it was her turn to ride. She had chosen the horse which my grandfather had named Clarence, and her little feet dangled just above the footrests. When my grandfather started up the carousel, and it began to spin, I am told that my grandfather was somehow drawn to look over at the little girl, whether it be because she was laughing, shouting to her parents, or just moving about in a way that drew his attention no one can tell me, but he managed to glance up at her just as she reached for the brass ring. Of course, she was so small, her feet did not touch the footrests, so she had poor balance. And as her little fingers looped around the brass ring, she slipped. My grandfather watched as she fell from Clarence's back onto the track of the platform. Needless to say, the result was disastrous, and the park immediately closed its doors. My grandfather, as well as all of the other workers, were fired, and my grandfather plunged into depression. Eventually, he found a new job and slowly recovered from the incident. But last week, my grandfather died in a car accident. An accident in the parking lot of the abandoned amusement park, and as if that wasn't strange enough, lying crouched in the front seat of his destroyed car, my grandfather's body was found clinging tightly in his right hand to an old, shiny, brass ring.